It's fair to say everyone has had a bad day, whether it be something small like spilling Taco Bell all over your lap in the car, or something big like a breakup, or more seriously, the loss of a loved one. But very few can say they've lost more than 13 years of their life's work in an instant while being essentially forced at gunpoint to press the delete key. Meet Logan 30 Acre, the founder of YouTube Empire Super Mario Logan, or SML for short. Accumulating a combined 25 million subscribers and 14 billion total views across his four channels, Logan is been working on what many think is kids content for over 15 years now, and at a glance, you can't blame them. Looking at the colorful thumbnails of SML, most just think it's a puppet channel made for children. But that couldn't be further from the truth. What's up? In reality, SML is closer to adult swim shows in terms of comedy, and Logan has tried making this explicitly clear over the years, establishing the channel at the age of 13 and growing up alongside it by incorporating more adult humor into his skits as he got older. Now, I want to be honest, my channel is not a kid channel. It's not meant for kids. My channel is for the same demographic that Family Guy or South Park or Robot Chicken. However, this wouldn't stop younger viewers from watching and becoming the channel's main demographic, resulting in SML being plunged into hot water after parents expressed their distaste. Controversy would soon follow when a child tried to imitate what a character was doing in an SML video, and before long, journalists were up in arms while calling for the channel's deletion. This is barely scratching the surface in terms of hardship, and Logan's entire YouTube career has been a non-stop struggle of medical issues, demonetization, cheating scandals, lawsuits, Lamborghinis, and the aforementioned deletion of his channels. But how did he get here? Today, we'll be uncovering the truth and the full story of what happened to Super Mario Logan, a man tortured by fame. Yo, I ain't here for the money, I ain't here for the fame Though it might be nice to own a jet plane I'ma do it all for you, come along and see it's true But the world is pretty cold, you might need a sweater too I'ma put a ride on ya, get from California Try and make it a night, but school they never taught ya Dreams of my own, I've been lucky from home I can do it on my own, but sometimes it gets cold it's like Logan 30 Acre was born on November 17, 1994, in Pensacola, Florida. He grew up with his older brother Lance, and the two often played in the living room with figurines, toys, and boogers ordinary kid stuff. From a young age, Logan's family had been facing challenges and difficulties. When he was three, his parents would get divorced, possibly due to his father's absence because of his job as a truck driver. Since this was so early in Logan's life, he never really remembered his biological father that much. Lance, on the other hand, probably did, being that he was older. Regardless, Lance was still a child, and when a child goes through something like a divorce, they can act out in erratic ways, sometimes unintentionally. Kids around that age also just like to smash things and make messes everywhere, so that could explain what happened next. While playing in the living room like they usually did, Lance accidentally struck Logan on the head with a baseball bat. This wasn't a light smack either. Lance had hit Logan so hard that he knocked him out. Fearing the worst, Lance ran to tell her mom, believing he had actually killed his younger brother. After getting rushed to the hospital, Logan came out relatively unscathed with no apparent brain damage, but his skull was fractured. He later blamed this incident on why he was never good at math. Uh, but he did hit me so hard, I think I forgot math, because I'm really, really bad at math. Unbeknownst to Logan, this was just the beginning of his physical trauma. In 2004, his family traveled to Louisiana to visit his cousins, and Logan regularly spent most of his time there swimming in his relative's huge pool. Since Louisiana has the highest amount of mosquitoes in the country, it was no surprise that Logan became a target of numerous mosquito bites, which didn't really bother him until he left. But upon returning to Florida, Logan's health took a downturn as he was experiencing severe neck pain and bouts of vomiting. Concerned for his well-being, his mom took him to the hospital for examination, and the doctor asked how he felt on a scale of 1 to 10, to which he involuntarily vomited all over the pain chart. Following this, nurses began performing assessments until Logan tested positive for West Nile virus and spinal meningitis. Immediately, everyone started to freak out, and the gravity of the situation prompted medical professionals to transfer Logan to a larger hospital for specialized treatment. Over the course of about two weeks, Logan's condition slowly improved as he received intensive care, gradually regaining his health. After being discharged from the hospital, his mother wanted to lift his spirits, recognizing the significance of the ordeal he had endured. In an act of wholesome 
awesome Chungus motherly love, she gifted him Super Smash Bros. Melee for the GameCube, aiming to provide solace after two weeks of being in the hospital. Logan loved Melee, and this gift would be the catalyst for his future obsession with its characters. This affinity multiplied when Logan's brother met a man named Brian, who eventually became a stepfather. Raising the two boys like his own, Brian's knowledge about computers and his enthusiasm for video games played a critical role in further cementing Logan's love for Nintendo, and more specifically, Mario. Spending several hours gaming with his brother and stepfather, Logan started to notice that it was becoming increasingly difficult to eat. Every time he sat down for dinner, he couldn't eat anything without feeling like he was going to throw up, and he was now losing weight. Visiting a doctor for almost the third time in a year, they couldn't find anything, and accused him of faking the illness for attention. Believing this diagnosis, his parents forced him to finish his meals at dinner before he could play any video games. When it came time to eat, Logan hid his food in his pockets and then flushed it down the toilet, just wanting to go back to doing kid stuff. Losing weight for him wasn't that much of an immediate concern, and subsequently, everybody forgot about this issue for the time being. After coming home from middle school one day, Lance showed Logan this cool new website called YouTube, and the two quickly became enamored with the concept of uploading their own videos to the internet for other people to see. So, on December 8th, 2007, Logan would create his YouTube channel, Super Mario Logan 1994, and later shortened it to just Super Mario Logan because he didn't want any numbers in his name. His first upload was, pretty funnily enough, an attempted re creation of a Mario Got Milk ad, but with his Mario figurines that he owned. This video didn't perform very well, and only got two views, but Logan didn't care at all. He felt an unwavering dedication and love for what he was doing, and this largely fueled his desire to upload more. At the age of 13, Logan wasn't exactly fixated on instant fame or overnight success. He legitimately just found joy in the process of creating short comedic skits, usually involving his Mario plushie. It was like he had an addiction to YouTube with the sheer amount of content he churned out, uploading an impressive eight videos per day. Despite this, they were still pretty scattered, barely receiving any traction, and only getting a few hundred views at best. Logan began watching more YouTube videos looking for ways to improve, and eventually found the channel Froggy Company. Froggy was one of the first channels to make plushy content, which was a niche genre originally created by the more well-known Cute Mario Bros. For the uncultured Zoomers watching that don't know what plush content is, think of when you were a child and your mom gave you an iPad. Now replace that iPad with action figures, and imagine you are playing a pretend scenario with your good friends, along with a crappy analog camera and high-pitched voiceovers. Then you pretty much have plush content, capturing the innocence of smacking toys together as a child. Logan found Froggy's videos hilarious, so he messaged him and the two became relatively good online friends, with Froggy giving Logan advice on how to improve his own videos. You can even see in the early days of YouTube that Froggy's videos were featured on the favorites section of SML's homepage. One of Froggy's ideas that Logan took to heart was adding a wider variety of plushies apart from Mario, implementing characters like Tony the Tiger, Shrek, and Woody. Yeah. What do you have to say about winning, Shrek? All oh, winning makes me have to take a crap. This decision actually paid off, and the channel received 1,000 new subscribers a few weeks after the content change. As viewers seemed to love the new characters, Logan would get more and more passionate about YouTube and wanted to improve the quality of his videos. To attain this, he spent $250 on a new set of Mario plushies and $150 on a brand new camera, going so far as to use all of his birthday money solely on this venture. At the time, the channel was a two-man show, and labor was divided among Logan and Lance until the duo started hanging out with two brothers named Zeke and Luke, who shared their enthusiasm for plushies and skits. The quartet quickly bonded over their interests, and it wasn't long before they were having a blast just playing off-camera. Their chemistry was apparent, and all four of them believed others might find their antics as entertaining as they did, so on November 17th, 2008, Logan uploaded Mario and Luigi's Stupid and Dumb Adventures, a series featuring his newly bought plushies, now voiced by himself, Lance, Zeke, and Luke. Episode 1 was titled A Silly Beginning, and it followed a short comedic story, presumably made by Logan, featuring the usual cast of Mario characters. Little did they know, this seemingly simple creation would mark the beginning of the channel's rise to fame. Man, do you ever get tired of these hour-long videos? Well, to be honest with you, Mario, not that much, because I don't even watch them. I just listen to them while I fall asleep. Hard to fall asleep when everyone is about yeah. losers, creeps, and... Hey guys, what's up? I'm just whining about BS again. Yeah, I mean, pretty much. Well, I just made a new friend, and I'd like you guys to meet him. Mm, no, actually, I don't want to meet anyone, because last uh -huh. time we met someone, the whole channel got demonetized. That's very true, Mario, and you know that whole cupcake guy incident? I mean, not a very good look for our child audience, know what I'm saying? Well, you don't have to worry, because this guy's attracted to adult women. Huh? Uh, well, here he comes right now. Uh, 
Hey guys, really nice to meet you. I've, I've been a big fan for a really long time. Um, ah, oh shit, what do I say again? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, I've been Turkey Tom. Until next time, uh, forget about it. The true turning point for SML's popularity was the introduction of the character Mama Luigi in Episode 2. Mama Luigi was voiced by Zeke and was, quote, a mentally deficient clone of Luigi. More importantly, though, the concept of his character was originally from a YouTube poop meme, also called Mama Luigi. That's Mama Luigi to you, Mario! YouTube poops, or YTPs, are remixes of existing videos, often re-edited in a way that distorts the original content and splices together audio to make cartoon characters say swear words or just warp the video to the point of nonsense. Popular examples include The Sky Had a Ouija, What Is Spaghetti, and Cold. If you were a kid that grew up in the 2000s, it's safe to say you probably would have known what a YTP was. Today, they have a fraction of the popularity they did in the past, and are often overlooked in favor of more popular meme formats. But in 08, the difference between a meme and a YouTube poop was really blurred, with Mama Luigi stemming from a YTP, while simultaneously becoming one of the oldest actual memes to be spread. As the Mama Luigi video gained track Action, it led more viewers to Logan's videos to see it in a different context. Similarly, fans of SML discovered the YTP and embraced the absurd humor, further fueling the growth of both the channel and the meme. The combination of Logan's endearing content, bolstered by the popularity of Mama Luigi, and widespread appeal of YouTube poops created a perfect storm for the channel's rapid growth, with the original video getting 800,000 views and the channel experiencing a substantial bump in sub count, reaching almost 10,000. Even during season one, you can really tell that everyone behind the scenes was just having a blast playing pretend with Mario, and viewers felt the same. Mama Luigi had become a staple of the channel, and fans cherished him as an unironic beloved character within the growing SML universe. Logan and his friends would still make separate content apart from the MLSDA series, like SML Shorts, but it continued to be the most popular thing on the channel, pulling in hundreds of thousands of views per episode now. Everything looked great, until Zeke and Luke revealed that they were moving to Colorado, splintering the young cast of the show. Before before they started packing, Logan begged the brothers to film one more episode in order to kill off Mama Luigi so fans didn't question where he went. He didn't have anyone else to replace Zeke's voice and because it became so iconic with fans, he felt it was the right thing to do. On July 23, 2009, SML uploaded The Loss of a Silly Billy, officially killing off Mama Luigi. Perfect. Mama Luigi dying actually shook the fanbase to its core at the time and was a testament to Logan's genuine skill of creating stories and characters that people enjoyed, even at a very young age. The plot that Logan had made immersed young viewers who could use their imagination and became a definitive trait of the channel. SML's demographic has always been kids, so watching their favorite character that they had been emotionally attached to straight up die, canonically, was traumatizing for a large portion of the fans, with some even unsubscribing. When I first watched this video back in 2009, Nine, I genuinely cried when Mama Luigi died. Dude, when I watched this all those years ago, I cried so much, man. All the little references around his grave and Yoshi sleeping there was too much for child me. Lol. This episode also exemplified Logan's legitimately funny and sometimes insane video style. Keep in mind, this was barely a high school boy making skits with plushies, so it's fair to assume there would have been some teenage angst that could leak in, but even acknowledging that, the contrast between the kids' characters and the situations they were in was crazy. For reference, this is the general plot outline for the episode when Mama Luigi dies. Luigi, Mama Luigi, and Mario are getting ready for their vacation. While they're ready to go, Mario spanks Toad because he was cursing, then beats him against the wall. They're ready to go until Bowser returns with a gun. Mama Luigi charges Bowser with a bomb strapped to his stomach, but Bowser then shoots the bomb, which causes an explosion, killing Mama Luigi. A funeral is held due to the loss of the silly clone of Luigi known as Mama Luigi. <laughs> this is, well, what am I reading? Over the next few weeks, fans and incessantly kept asking when Mama Luigi would make his grand return, and annoyed Logan so much that it became an in-joke among the community until he finally revealed the actual reason as to why Mama Luigi died. Regardless, it was clear to see the channel had become very successful with how passionate fans got about recurring characters, and other plush tubers started to notice, with one becoming increasingly jealous, Froggy. Froggy had stopped talking to Logan after a while and switched his own content to YTPs, not really caring about SML as a channel until he noticed that it started to skyrocket 
skyrocket in popularity. Froggy slowly grew to resent Logan out of jealousy because he felt he was the one who contributed enormous ideas to the series, yet it was SML who received all the credit and fame. This jealousy got to the point where he messaged him on Skype and demanded that Logan give over the SML channel password, feeling like he was responsible for its fame. What followed is considered lost media, and there's barely any definitive sources apart from a few archive videos and a wiki entry. But from what it seems, most of this actually did happen, and Logan has confirmed a majority of it in interviews. After getting denied, Froggy had gotten even more resentful and impulsively deleted all of his own plush videos, blocked Logan on Skype, and unsubscribed from SML. In July of 2009, Froggy took this hate to a level 15 mauled status by creating a channel called I Hate Mario Logan, and he started to make YouTube poops of SML content. Only one video has been archived, but even commenters remarked at the level of insane rage that Froggy had for Logan. The drama between the two reaches boiling point when Froggy uploaded a video threatening to kill Logan and his family if he didn't give him the channel password, apparently sending it to him 200 times. <laughs> Evidently, this crossed the line for Logan, and he reported the channel, which got it terminated a few hours later. Undeterred, Froggy didn't stop threatening Logan and his fans, which subsequently got his main channel removed as well. Froggy accused Logan of orchestrating this termination and tried setting up another account to keep spreading hate towards SML. However, by then, YouTube had enough of Froggy's antics and banned him for life, rendering his email unusable for creating new accounts. After this incident, Froggy vanished, and the entire community just wanted to put the drama behind them to simply continue enjoying Logan's content, who also felt the same way. Following the sudden death of Mama Luigi, Logan needed a fitting replacement to re-engage fans with the story, so he created one of the most infamous characters to this day. Black Yoshi. Mess my neighborhood, folk. Try me again. Voiced by Lance, Black Yoshi was introduced in Yoshi's Cousin and served as a deuteragonist, but more infamously was essentially every black stereotype ever combined into one. His hobbies included committing crimes, stealing, drinking grape Kool-Aid, eating fried chicken, and freeloading. Obviously, this would be seen as absolutely insane by today's standards, but in the early 2010s, this was pretty much par for the course for Shane Dawson. So, SML took notes. It didn't seem like this came from a malicious or hateful place from Logan. He just needed a funny character that would interest viewers like Mama Luigi did. Black Yoshi was the first and certainly not the last controversial character, and he established that even though Logan was using kids' toys, he definitely wasn't afraid to make his skits have a very dark and edgy twist to the humor. Fans loved Black Yoshi, and the character got its own show called Black Yoshi and the Birds. By sophomore year, the channel had gotten accepted into the YouTube Partner Program, and SML was finally starting to make Logan and money. The Mario and Luigi series had blown up even more, with episodes getting millions of views. On top of this, Logan also started to date a girl named Chili, who he had met that year. In spite of the recent drama that had occurred, Logan's life was going great, and things were looking up. That is, until his health started to crumble. Those eating issues he had a few years back were getting worse, and his doctor even put him on a feeding tube because he couldn't gain any weight. Life took a tumultuous turn for Logan as he lived with increasing difficulties. The feeding tube that was meant to provide relief seemed futile as he endured frequent bouts of sickness and even minor seizures. The weight of his illness forced Logan to miss a month of school, and the pain was so unbearable that he was having suicidal thoughts. Even though he had a new girlfriend and a devoted fan base and was making money, Logan's condition left him bedridden and unable able to move, and there was no immediate cure. Seeing this, his mom decided to seek help from a specialized doctor, and the diagnosis was worrying. Superior mesenteric artery syndrome, an exceedingly rare and deadly intestinal disease. The only solution to fix this was a risky surgery that could have actually made Logan come out worse than he had been before, but they still went for it. Because of the risk, Logan decided that he needed to finish the Mario and Luigi series in case he died, so he uploaded the season finale on June 20th, 2012, making it a satisfying end with a time loop that brought it back to the first episode so people could watch the series forever. Against all odds, the series proved to be a success, but there have been unintended consequences as a result. Logan was only supposed to stay in the hospital for a week and a half, but instead he had to stay confined for 33 days with a feeding tube, keeping him sustained through an IV. During his stay, Logan met a young boy named Jamarcus who was battling leukemia, and as the days passed by, they slowly became friends. Before Logan knew it, he was out of the hospital and felt better, but sadly Jamarcus was getting getting worse. Logan visited Jamarcus often until one day, when Jamarcus was looking worse than usual, and told Logan he would be going home soon. He didn't understand what he meant by that, until a few days later, when Jamarcus tragically passed away. 
This profoundly affected Logan so much that he started to go to church afterwards, and it motivated him to keep working on his channel, giving him a much greater appreciation of the life he had. In 2013, Logan graduated high school, and it coincided with the 100,000 subscriber milestone. With his pretty remarkable success, he decided that college wasn't right for him, so he fully dedicated himself to SML. After five years of hard work, SML had finally become one of the biggest plush channels ever, excelling beyond the genre limitations by consistently uploading, making unique storylines, and creating a likable cast of characters. From an outsider's perspective, it might have looked like just a stupid kids channel, but viewers were genuinely engaged with the work that Logan had put in, and it showed. By 2014, the Super Mario Logan channel had already doubled its subscriber count. Logan's life had gone from frequent hospital visits to big YouTube AdSense checks appearing in the mail, as his videos were now averaging at least over 100,000 views. Utilizing his boom in popularity, he went on vacation with Chili, wanting to take a break from the frequent uploads. The couple had been together for three years now, and their relationship was growing, as did SML. Chili had even made a vlog channel showing a behind-the-scenes look at what Logan was like when the cameras were off, and immediately fans could notice that he was pretty much the same person in real life as how he acted during skits, exhibiting a happy-go-lucky attitude wherever he went. 2014 also introduced Season 3 of the Mario & Luigi series, but only three episodes were made, and most fans still consider the previous season finale to be the canon end. Over the next two years, Logan made significant investments in upgrading his video and microphone quality, which became apparent in enhanced visuals, clearer audio, and much more professional editing. While this improved quality, the overall production value of SML also increased substantially, and attracted more people while retaining loyal fans. This also showed Logan's commitment to evolving the channel over time. This was reflected with more elaborate skits such as the Luigi's Mansion series, but more importantly, SML Movies, a label that encompassed a variety of shows and new characters while mostly being one-off skits. SML Movies became about 99% of the channel's content from here on out, and you can find almost every video under this moniker now. One of the key additions over the years was the integration of both Mario plushies he had used before and brand new original plushies. With a higher budget due to the channel's success, Logan was able to incorporate homemade puppets entirely specific to his channel. Characters like Chef Pee Pee, Brooklyn Tea Guy, and Jackie Chu added a new twist that fans loved and established more of an identity for the growing Super Mario Logan brand and lore. The show's voice actors had also grown from just Logan and Lance to an entire cast of people that had iconic characters in their own right. Fan favorite crew members like Lovell, Chris, Elena, and Chili's brother Tito were now integral members of the business, and it formed a sort of family-like team. Emphasis was also put on side characters like Bowser Jr., who could be considered the second most popular character on the channel around this time. Bowser Jr. really was the first character to get a noticeable amount of backlash from fans. Viewers complained that it was too baby-like and had an annoying voice, while attracting a much younger audience than they wanted. But these criticisms were few and far between, and most fans still watched. As new shows and skits started to develop, viewers noticed a gradual but distinct tonal change from 2014 through 2015. Logan had started to use the word more, and video subjects started to get more and more dark as time went on, with Black Yoshi exemplifying this perfectly, along with plot changes like the Brooklyn Tea Guy's odd family situation. Older fans had already been accustomed to this style, and even newer viewers embraced it, but this was just the build-up for the eventual climax of his controversial content. On January 24th, 2016, Logan uploaded Mario the Babysitter, debuting a brand new character, Jeffy. A child that wore a helmet, a diaper, and shoved pencils up his nose. Jeffy was the one character that crossed the line for some, and many accused Logan of making a mockery of the mentally disabled. Despite this, Jeffy's debut in the SML series was an instant hit with a majority of Logan's audience, but mostly the younger side. In a paradoxical way, Jeffy's character was extremely controversial and edgy, but also had a personality that kids enjoyed, often repeating the word, why, and having slapstick humor with a very goofy voice. I mean, there's, there's no beating around the bush here, this character is just uh, making fun of autistic people, right? <laughs> I mean, I mean, what, what else is there to say? Logan capitalized on this popularity to the fullest and started making uploads that fully centered around Jeffy, which paid out almost instantly. Any content related to Jeffy blew up and smashed his previous milestones. SML movie Jeffy's Parents has 73 million views, by the way. Jeffy's immense popularity translated into a lucrative merchandise market as well. Fans clamored for products featuring the character, leading Logan to make a range of Jeffy-themed merchandise, including plush toys, clothing, and accessories. These products not only further solidified Jeffy's status as an icon in the community, but also contributed significantly to the backlash Logan would start receiving. 
Longtime fans had grown up and wanted more in-depth storylines instead of constant content revolving around Jeffy. To them, Jeffy was everything they hated about Bowser Jr., but cranked up to 11. And if you weren't a kid, he got pretty annoying after a while. It felt like the only thing Logan would upload now was Jeffy content, but this wasn't exactly true at the time, and mostly just a sentiment held by disgruntled fans who had gotten older. Apart from these aging fans, Jeffy's video still landed Logan into several controversies, probably the second most infamous one being Jeffy's Naughty Word, an episode where Jeffy learns about not the four-letter F-word, but the, the one with six letters, resulting in Mario spanking him and then going to jail for domestic abuse. While this was controversial, people that voiced their displeasure were still in the minority. Keep in mind, this was 2016, where some of the most popular YouTube channels were pushing the humor way more than Logan did. People like Filthy Frank and Leafy were huge at the time. Internet culture as a whole was very different then than it is now, and people were much more accepting of politically incorrect humor in general. So, on October 18th, 2016, Super Mario Logan would officially hit 1 million subscribers, showcasing that the empire he created was so big that at the age of 22, he was able to buy his own house. It cannot be overstated how big of an impact Jeffy had on SML, and his introduction more than tripled SML's sub count in less than a year, dwarfing the success he had previously. Even looking at his graph for 2016, there's a very noticeable spike in monthly views right after Jeffy's debut, with the channel landing an average of 50 million views a month. The accidental success of Jeffy was like finding a golden goose for Logan, and it looked like it had zero downsides for the foreseeable future. As time went on, the fear of a great content replacement via Jeffy from older fans was starting to become true. Looking at videos published around the year, it's not hard to tell that a very large majority of SML content either had Jeffy, Bowser Jr., or both in it. For a channel with Mario in the name, it was weird for onlookers to see Jeffy becoming the face, but that's exactly what happened. On March 24th, 2017, Logan uploaded Jeffy's Tantrum, a video where Jeffy wants a new game on the App Store, but isn't allowed to get it, so he starts freaking out and throwing what some might consider a tantrum. The level of destruction that Jeffy displayed like destroying an actual TV was a pretty good illustration of how far SML had risen monetarily compared to their earlier skits. But that wasn't the main source of commentary. After getting punished for wrecking the house, Jeffy gets depressed and decides to do a thing that, uh, well, you can't, you can't really say what he did in a YouTube video, but... You know. For the time being, this went under the radar, and for the next few months, nobody reacted, with the content growing edgier and edgier with its humor. One great example is Jeffy the Rapper. I don't know where Jeffy's at! What's up, where Jeffy becomes a gangster and makes love to a Cheeto box while saying the gamer word. Another good example is the secret door, which contained such a high budget with its puppet gore that I, I literally probably have to censor this because YouTube will think it's real. Even as Logan was constantly one-upping himself in terms of dark comedy, his audience loved it, and he even bought a Lamborghini with all the money he'd been making. The surge in popularity from Jeffy had reached its peak, with the channel getting 174 million views in one month and reaching almost 5 million subs. By now, fans had been begging for much longer content. Logan played what some considered to be a cruel joke, uploading an hour-long video called the SML Movie on April 1st that was a literal hour of Jeffy watching paint dry on a fence. <laughs> but four months later, an actual trailer for a real movie dropped, hitting never-before-seen levels of hype and excitement from the fan base. Logan was now working on a full-length movie, and the SML channel seemed unstoppable. That is, until December 11th, 2017. An article would be published called Mum Claims YouTube Craze Jeffy Inspired Son 7 to Put a Noose Around His Neck. The Jeffy's Tantrum video from a few months ago allegedly had inspired a child to mimic what Jeffy was doing, and he had almost died. His school even made a Facebook post warning parents about Logan's channel. It has recently come to our attention that some children are watching a YouTube show called Jeffy. Whilst we are aware that YouTube has got many educational videos, the content of the Jeffy videos are inappropriate for anyone under the age of 18, and the child's mum has urged parents to stop their kids from watching Jeffy clips. I would just tell everyone to be extra careful, she said. He still has a few marks around his neck, but thankfully there isn't anything to worry about. This mother, who claimed her son almost died, stayed anonymous, and with no photographic evidence, fans speculated that this entire thing may have been a lie created by the mother because she just wanted the channel taken down. Like a Karen in a grocery store wanting to speak to the manager. The only problem with this theory is, similar to the mother's claim, there isn't any evidence backing it up. Regardless, numerous articles were made about the mother, and journalists would contact YouTube for a comment on the situation. 
YouTube's response was to completely demonetize and age restrict Logan's channel, most likely due to them thinking he was a part of the ElsaGate scandal that the platform was dealing with around the same time. ElsaGate was a controversy that came to light when concerned parents and users noticed that seemingly harmless children's videos were displaying disturbing and inappropriate content, including violence, sex, and other not great stuff. These videos were specifically designed to manipulate popular children's characters to attract young audiences and exploit YouTube's algorithm to gain views and ad revenue. If you've ever heard about Spider-Man and Elsa content, this is where it stemmed from, naturally. Infamous channels like Toy Freaks even had their real-life kids doing things that were borderline abusive on camera and eventually got journalists involved, writing articles about how YouTube was allowing this content to be pushed to kids. Consequently, advertisers began to pull up from YouTube and the platform started to panic, terminating more than 270 accounts and removing over 150,000 videos, as well as making a new YouTube guideline so creators would no longer be able to monetize videos, which made inappropriate use of family-friendly characters. Obviously, this was a major problem for Logan because that's literally what all of his content was. The channel clearly wasn't trying to be predatory, but due to the unfortunate circumstances, it often got labeled as an Elsagate channel for the misinformed. Logan responded in a video, upset with YouTube's ambiguous reasoning for why he was demonetized. Fans expressed outrage, and the hashtag SaveSML started to trend, mostly on Instagram. Not long after, ads would be reinstated for the time being, but were taken away again just two months later. The next few months would be an endless back and forth of demonetizations and appeals, with no apparent direct line of contact through YouTube. Keemstar previously had success getting some channels remonetized, and SML fans started to ask him, but sadly, after weeks of asking, he only responded with this. The animals has adult themes, and he puts around the stuffed animals necks all right so of course he's gonna get demonetized and then he uploads a video saying why well, I don't understand how my videos are not family friendly well because you're playing with stuffed animals which is attracting a, a, a young demographic of kids to watch your content and then you have adult themes the situation escalated when his main channel received a severe blow in the form of a community guideline strike, which put his entire channel's existence at risk. Demoralized and contemplating quitting altogether, Logan was at the lowest he had been in a while. With his main channel no longer a viable option, he decided to redirect his audience to his second channel, aptly named Super Luigi Logan. This was the nuclear option, but switching channels looked to be the only viable way to move forward if he wanted to keep his career. And to his surprise, Super Luigi Logan gained tremendous traction and support rapidly accumulating nearly 1.6 million subscribers. Unfortunately, his success on this new channel was short-lived, as the demonetization fairy struck yet again, leaving him feeling frustrated and uncertain about his future on YouTube for what seemed like the hundredth time. Forced to adapt, Logan moved his content to yet another channel, Super Bowser Logan, in a bid to continue producing content and reach his audience. Logan had considerably watered down his edginess this time, and was trying everything to ensure this third channel wouldn't get demonetized as well. Common Sense Media calls Super Mario Logan your basic online nightmare. It didn't help that a few months after switching channels again, Good Morning America had broadcasted a segment on internet safety that mentioned SML in a less than savory way. Um, Super Mario Logan, I watch him. He's one of my favorite channels. You've seen it too. Yeah, I know who Jeffy is. And you know who Jeffy is too. You're laughing. Cursing, misogyny, I mean, Violence, it's got it all. Logan responded, saying, Common Sense Media only viewed our old contents, and their review was accurate solely regarding those videos. We invite Common Sense Media to conduct a review of our newer videos, which are much cleaner in content. It's important to note, when we began creating these videos back in 2008, we were kids ourselves. We were just a few teenagers goofing around. Given we were just kids, we did not understand many things about YouTube or the audience we would subsequently attract. Today, it's much different. We've adjusted our content to appeal to a wider audience. While it's in everyone's interest, to ensure children are not exposed to inappropriate content online, it's ultimately the responsibility of the parents, guardians, and or supervising adults. These are the only people that have control over what their children have access to.
At this point, Logan was appearing on Chili's vlog channel a lot more frequently to update fans and create more content with the recent dry spell. In a half-joking way, he mentioned how he and Chili would be in New York City, and if fans wanted to meet up at the Nintendo store for a free plush, they could. The result was an entire block of New York City getting shut down, and what looked like an endless supply of SML fans swarming the building. Logan had unintentionally created an army of excited viewers who wanted to meet him, and it got so bad that police had to escort him and Chili away to calm down the crowd, so they didn't get trampled. Always keeping his happy attitude, Logan remarked at how he appreciated the insane support of his fanbase, and he accepted full responsibility for the chaos that ensued. Looking for extra help in this period of uncertainty, Logan reached out and offered to hire EDP, a content creator with a large following that mainly did short comedic videos talking about his favorite football team and fecal matter. And uh, we better get the f out of here, dude. I just over flooded the toilet. Um, EDP was a perfect fit for the channel, seeing his sense of humor, and he had a very recognizable voice. As negotiations unfolded, a deal emerged where EDP would secure a permanent role as a part of the channel's crew, rather than just a brief cameo. He stood to receive a monthly payment of $5,000, alongside the enticing prospect of his Super Bowl attendance being covered. Unfortunately, something happened during this exchange, and the job offer failed to materialize, with the reason left up in the air. EDP later expressed his frustration in his exposed video, Super Mario Logan Logan f***ed me over, delving into the details of their unraveling deal. In essence, Logan did go through and buy the tickets for EDP and his buddy so they could fly to the Super Bowl, but he was still upset that Logan never got back to him about the job offer that had been previously discussed. Logan never responded, and the video was soon forgotten by viewers, chalking it up to mostly petty drama, but after EDP got exposed trying to meet up with a 14-year-old girl, people began to revisit this original video, illustrating that the situation could have ended up a hundred times worse, and that it's hilarious how Logan unintentionally intentionally dodged a massive bullet. Afterwards, Logan wanted to get away from any kind of YouTube drama and decided to go to a Jason Derulo concert with Chili, proposing to her in the middle of the show. Things had started to look up for Logan in his personal life, even though his channels were experiencing another wave of misfortune. At this point, the Super Mario Logan channel was in a vegetative state. While still growing in subscriber count, it kept getting demonetized and remonetized in an infuriating whiplash of mixed signals, and it was basically just an archive for older content. Super Luigi Logan had been nuked as well, leaving Super Bowser Logan to become the main source of uploads. Ironically enough, SBL was still steadily growing and actually retained a huge amount of support from viewers considering this was the third channel Logan had moved to. However, just when Logan's luck looked like it was turning around, it started to get worse again. Six months later, Chili tweeted out, Relationships are all fake anyways, lol. Getting an obvious amount of attention from worried fans wondering what was going on with the couple. Ten days later, Chili's sister would start tweeting out accusations that Logan was cheating on Chili. At Super Mario Logan, you're a worthless piece of sh** who not only cheated on my sister with a hooker that you paid about 60000 for in her own home, but then you turn around and get pissed off at my brother, at Tito Totters, for f***ing snitching on you, and then you break all of his goddamn stuffed animals. And not only that, you go ahead and decide to f***ing scratch yourself to try to get pity from the police. F***ing pussy. You deserve to die alone. Don't worry, honey. Everyone always gets theirs. And let's not forget how you f***ing put your hands on me. She later followed this up with screenshots of Logan apparently begging Tito not to tell Chili, along with revealing the name of this alleged stripper named Willow. Logan then says that Tito can continue living in the SML house if he doesn't tell her, which she immediately refuses, asserting that he would be telling her anyway. Viewers pointed out that $60,000 for a hooker appeared like a pretty steep price, but were suspicious nonetheless. Tito then made his own statement providing further detail into what he had said Logan had done. Logan decided to tell me how he cheated on Chili, my sister, and how he really wanted to show me videos of him and that girl having sex while she was on her period. I said no, and honestly, he shouldn't have told me in the first place. That's why I got kicked out of the house and got my Sonic plushies destroyed by Logan. Also, do you know why Elena wasn't in a video for two years? Well, that's because Logan had sex with her. Now needing answers, fans began calling commenting on Logan's Instagram, before he released a video showing that he and Chili were still together, and nothing apparently was wrong. I wanted to let you guys know that me and Logan are still together. And everything's fine, there's just a lot of dumb drama going on, so just... Ignore. Leaked DMs had also surfaced of Logan sending uncensored pictures of Tito at a strip club to an Instagram group chat called SML Drama Alert. The assumed reason is because he was angry with him and wanted some kind of revenge. Allegedly, there were minors in this group chat, but the only statements that have come out so far are Twitter accounts saying that they were in it. It's also unknown if Logan knew the age of everyone in this group chat, and he hasn't made a comment about it to this day. The only definitive statement is from Chili, who said, That's highly messed up. Not on Tito, he's a single guy, so it doesn't really matter. But those 
women, like no one got their permission to leak pictures of their bodies like that, which is now forever on the internet. And sending it to a group of kids uncentered? WTF. I'm kind of mad. Nothing concrete is known about how old anyone actually was in this group chat, or more details about this, and this is by no means an accusation that Logan did anything of predatory nature, just presenting the available accusations. Two months later, Logan posted on his Instagram story that he and Chili had been broken up for a month, and he just wanted to let everyone know. Since he never denied cheating on Chili, fans have taken this as an unofficial admission of guilt, and Logan started to receive backlash. Meanwhile, the same day he announced the breakup, Lovell came out and said that Chili had actually been cheating on Logan for over two years, and Logan even knew about this. Chili has been cheating, Chili has been cheating on Logan for longer than two months. He's known about it for two months because that's when I told him. Logan then joined Lovell on an Instagram live and explained what he knew. Okay, so the guy Chili was been cheating on me for a year with. A year. This, yeah, this, ain't, my this mom, is just one of the because it's been like a couple of man. A couple, a couple. Uh -huh. So last March, a year ago, March of 2018, Chili was messaging this guy named Mark on Instagram. Yeah. And she like deleted the messages really quick. And I ended up paying the poor girl like a thousand dollars to get the messages. And yeah. I was like, I want, I want to see him. And she was like flirting with him. And he's like, No, dude, I promise. Like guy code, like dude, like bro, like, I promise. <laughs> I, remember, I remember you telling me this. <laughs> yeah. So today, my mom, cause Chili refused to get out of my house because I broke up with her forever ago. But she was refusing to get out of my house. My yeah. mom like caught them like together at my house. <laughs> Adding insult to injury, that same month, the SNL house would get swatted and Logan had to walk out with his hands up while a gun was pointed at him. Viewers that had taken Logan's side in this drama speculated that she was the one who swatted the house. However, no proof was ever shown. By April, Lance posted Logan's new girlfriend on his vlog channel, revealing his new girlfriend to be a girl named Adriana. It seemed like Logan had officially moved on with him posting pictures and even dissing Chili in newer videos. I'm actually gonna throw this away on Whoa. camera. Wow. The one who should not be named by it. Oh. Yeah, I thought it, was, I thought a fan did it. No. In the SpongeBob episode, they say it belongs in the trash. That's so, where it belongs. So let's put I it know. How about we let Adriana throw it away? Adriana. Yeah. Uh, let her throw that out. Oh. oh. The next few months would go by until Chili uploaded a video titled, Tito Sneaks Into the SML House. This wasn't clickbait, Tito had actually gone to Logan's house and snuck through his window before getting caught by Logan and threatened with the police. Tito, what are you doing? Get the fuck out! I, I, I gotta finish, I finished the video! Obviously, this video was fake, but more than anything, this just confused fans and brought up the question as to why and how. If Logan was officially broken up with Chili, it was assumed he wouldn't be on talking terms with Tito yet. Yet, here they were making a clickbait video. Viewers hypothesized that this entire breakup drama could have been fabricated for attention, but at that point, you have to question their intentions. It's not like they're desperate for views or money. Super Bowser Logan was getting 100 million views per month, and it already racked up 4.5 million subscribers. It also didn't make sense because if it was fake, Logan wouldn't have actually gotten with Adriana. These questions wouldn't be answered until December when Adriana went to jail for domestic battery and property damage. According to Chili, she's destroyed someone's car and was hitting Logan at a gas station caught on camera. Logan said he's okay though. For a second time, Logan would appear in one of Chili's vlogs. This time, he and Chili bought Tito a car and it came across that the group had just reconciled and were all friends again. One distinct edit, however, that was made to the video, which stood out to viewers, is that it looked like whoever edited the video was subtly making fun of Adriana by flashing her mugshot for half a second when Logan was talking about ugly women. She ain't that pretty. <laughs> no, she's not funny. She's big as hell. On the inside, you see it. You know, you know how they say the inside should be beautiful? Mm. You're not like, oh my god, best I ever had. This is the car you get to work to get your new car yeah. you want. It's still up for debate on who actually made that edit and if Logan knew about it or not, but it wouldn't matter because a month later, Chili and Adriana made separate Instagram posts that both had Logan in them. Presumably, the three had all attended a football game together and the details were kept relatively private until a few days later when Lovell leaked a video of Adriana mocking Chili for allegedly getting addicted to cocaine and Adderall along with calling her a cunt. Adriana made a response video clarifying that the reason she did this was because Chili had apparently leaked her nudes of when she used to be a stripper. Adriana then posted secret audio of a conversation she had with Logan and his manager, discussing that he had potentially cheated again. Looking back at a tweet made by Chili in November of 2020, this potentially was the case. Logan tested positive for 
Bovid, which means I could possibly have it. Lol. Adriana already knows. He's been seeing me, and she doesn't care if she gets cheated on, so it honestly doesn't matter if you tell her, lol. But yeah, that's the latest update with the crew. All that aside, beginning in February of 2021, Logan and Adriana officially broke up, leaving his relationship status a mystery for the time being. Sadly, right as the drama bore the semblance of ending, it started back up again. On the 14th of February, Nintendo of America mailed Logan a cease and desist letter stating that he was in violation of their brand, and if he didn't stop using Nintendo characters like Mario, Luigi, and Bowser, etc., then they would take him to court. Logan was forced to delete Super Luigi Logan and abandon Super Bowser Logan, changing its name simply to SML, and removing any video, branding, or character related to Nintendo. Logan went about the grueling process process of making all of his previous Nintendo characters into his own homemade puppets, and renaming the characters like Mario to Marvin, Bowser Jr. to just Jr., and so on and so forth. This wasn't the only change, and as a sort of way to maintain the legacy of his older content, he decided to remake literally every old episode featuring his new characters. Keep in mind, since then, archive channels have popped up, one of which has more than 700,000 subscribers and is merely re-uploads of old SML videos. That's how famous this guy is. Meanwhile, while Logan had toyed with the idea of creating all of his own original characters in the past, but he didn't go through with it fully in fear of fan outcry. Now, he was forced and there was no other way. July 10th, 2021 might be the most painful memory Logan has ever gone through. Deleting the original Super Mario Logan channel, along with its 9.5 million subscribers and 6.9 billion views. Over 13 years of Logan's life work was gone in an instant and fans were devastated, erasing millions of fond childhood memories. This video genuinely hurt me. I remember when I started watching these videos, I was about 8 or 9, so about 2009 to 2009. 2010. I hate to see all those memories just being deleted like that. Nintendo has been nothing but a pain in the ass in recent years. I hope you are able to archive those videos for anyone wanting to go back and relive the good times like myself. Hope all is good. While some consider the deletion of the original SML channel to be the death of the brand, others consider it to be a rebirth of sorts. And I agree with that quite literally in this case. Five months after the creation of the new SML channel, Logan announced that Chili was pregnant and that they were officially back together. The two had apparently worked out their issues and settled any differences after Chili privately told him the news. For fans, this was a Christmas miracle and repaired some of the traumatic damage Logan had unintentionally caused by deleting the original channel and all of the previous relationship drama that went down. SML certainly wasn't hurting in the money department either, as they had gotten enough funds to be able to open a real-life physical SML store, selling puppets, merch, and an assortment of Jeffy-related items. Jeffy was still pretty much the mascot for the channel, but his annoying traits had been heavily toned down and any hate for him largely dissipated. More characters have returned, and overall the content is much more diverse, with Jeffy not always being the complete focus of every episode. Swear words have also made a comeback, as well as content geared towards satire and more adult references. But it doesn't look like the new channel has been affected. A prevailing theory among fans is that the SML brand has made so much money from external things like merch that it doesn't actually matter if videos get demonetized, but no one really knows. Production value for content is at an all-time high, and videos have started to look closer to Mr. Beast in terms terms of budget. After the couple's daughter was born, Logan fulfilled the promise he had made all those years ago and released the SML movie special titled Jeffy's 18th Birthday. It had been five years since the original reveal, and because of all the drama that had transpired, Logan was never able to finish the movie until now. Evidently, he couldn't use the original script after his cease and desist, so he partially rewrote it and changed characters around. Fans didn't seem to care at all, and the video received universal praise for how well done it was. And if it means anything, this video now has 30 million views. Logan has since moved out to an undisclosed location, but still owns the SML house and is currently using it as a work and filming location. Today, the SML channel isn't doing bad at all. In fact, it's actually killing it, boasting an impressive 5 million subscribers and a staggering monthly average of 100 million views. Even after moving channels for the fourth time, Logan has managed to continue pulling in new and old viewers, which is honestly insane. Most YouTubers would have their entire career killed after moving to a second channel, yet here Logan was doing better than ever. The new channel seems to have remained untouched by the demonetization fairy since his creation, transforming into a gold mine for Logan, his team, and his newly formed family. Logan's someone who's been challenged with numerous obstacles over the course of his life, yet through sheer grit and perseverance, he managed to emerge on top in the end. Regardless of personal opinions about his character, one cannot deny his work ethic, underpinning SML's success, and his dedication to making content is nothing short of commendable, even if that content is playing with toys all day. Hopefully through all of this, Logan's learned from his mistakes and continues making monetizable content in the future while growing his brand. 
I've been Turkey Tom. Thanks for watching. And until next time, leave me alone. You ever play in a game where you guess a letter, and if you guess the wrong letter, I gotta draw a stick man up there until he's hanging? I mean, I can't call it the real name, because we might get in trouble and end up on Good Morning America again.